before we get to exposure, I want to teach you how you can reopen photos into Camera Raw. This is a workflow issue, but if you've been following along, switching from one photo to the next, you might be having trouble and getting frustrated about how can I get back into this Camera Raw menu. So I'm going to start from scratch so that we can kind of see what the proper workflow is. So let me just exit out of this photo. I'm not going to save. So if it's with a raw photo, it's a little bit easier. Open up your raw photo in Photoshop, just like we've done before. And say you make all your adjustments. We've changed the exposure. We've changed our white balance. Super crazy cool. What you want to do then would be potentially opening up this image in Photoshop to do other edits. Maybe you are adding titles or graphics. The easy thing is to click open image, but let me show you what happens. When we say open image, if we want to go back and make changes to the settings that we did in camera raw, we can't do that because now those, think of those settings as being burned into this image in Photoshop. That's typically how Photoshop works. It's a raster based application where once you make edits, those edits are sort of burned into that image. So we can't go back and open this image in Camera Raw. There is a way to go back and open this up in Camera Raw by going to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. But this is basically starting from scratch and see how our white balance is back to zero. And now we don't have all the raw capabilities of editing white balance. This is basically like editing a JPEG version of this. And if we do this again, we're basically just layering on new effects, which is not the proper way. We want to be able to go back and edit the raw photo in the original state. So I'm going to cancel this, close this out again. I know this is a little bit repetitive, but I just want you to be clear. We're going to open up this photo in Photoshop and I'll show you something crazy. So notice right now that there's this practice photos Photoshop 1.xmp file. This is what's called a sidecar file that has been created by the computer that is basically attached to this fo practice photo one photo. If I right click and choose to open this up in Photoshop, it's going to open up the original image in Photoshop with those adjustments that we made. Crazy, right? So that's one way that you can actually go back and adjust the settings but we don't want to have to be doing that over and over, closing the photo, reopening it. There's an easier way. Hold the shift button down. Notice what happens to this button in the bottom right. It changes from open image to open object. And so if I do this and click this, it opens this image as a smart object, which means that you can go back and edit things and edit the original photo by just double clicking this image over in this layer panel. Now we haven't talked much about the workspace of Photoshop. Yours might look a little different. If you go up to window workspace, click essentials, which is the default setting. And you should see a workspace that looks something like this. This is your layer panel. And this is this photo layer that we've added. Double click that and it will open back up in Photoshop camera raw. And so now we can make our adjustments. We could change our, you know, white balance or whatever, make it crazy green. Now, if we click OK, it's a smart object still, so we can always go back and edit this later. That's the process with raw photos. So if I cancel this, and let me just close this, don't save. If I delete this file, this sidecar file, and then I try to open up the original photo in Photoshop, it's going to open up the original photo. So if you've made edits and you see that sort of sidecar file in your file structure, leave it there unless you want to delete it and start from scratch. The workflow with JPEG images is a little bit different. If we go this route of going file, open, and we open the JPEG image with the option of the format camera raw and open it, and then say we adjust things, which I actually have the adjustments that I was playing around with before, and then again, hold shift to open the object. There we have this image that we can double click and go back into our camera raw settings, just like we did with the raw image. But what if from Finder you had opened the image, opened it with Photoshop, 
And now we have our image and we went this route of opening camera raw of going to filter camera raw. If we make changes here, then go to OK. Those changes are burnt into that image. So that's not proper workflow when you're editing a JPEG layer of your Photoshop file. So I'm going to close that out. Let me do show you the proper way. Right click or open up your photo in Photoshop. What we want to do is convert this image to a smart object. So if we right click it and choose convert to smart object, and then we go to filter camera raw, make our changes, click OK. Now that camera raw edit is applied as a filter to this photo that we can double click and get back to and then change and edit the original photo. Then we can continue to make changes and go back and forth. Again, I know this is a lot of sort of workflow, but these are a lot of the questions that I used to get from students who were confused about working with RAW or JPEG images. So now that you know the workflow, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we're going to continue back with that photo of Sam, the scary photo, not this one. We're going to open the scary photo of Sam, this one right here, and we're going to adjust the exposure.